What's up my friends, we all know that America is a beautiful place, but today I'll be reacting to the top 100 places you need to visit before you die. But before I go into that, can I ask you for one thing? If you can leave a like on this video, thank you so much my friend, really means a lot. If you can subscribe, oh man, forget about it, you make my day. Have that in consideration. Now, link for the original video in my description. This is a long one, so I'll try to not pause too much, even though with me that tends to be quite difficult. difficult. So let's play it. Okay. Do you have a bucket list? I've had several in my life. Life. Yeah, I. Okay, I said I will not pause too much. I'm already pausing. Uh, I had a bucket list, uh, and I still have four things that I want to accomplish in in my life. Uh, but the uh, places that I want to travel, I, I I don't have one. Experience bucket list, a career bucket list, and a travel bucket list. I focus on the travel one these days more than any of them. Actually, I threw one of them out. The one I made when I was 16, I got rid of it when I was like 20. I opened it up one day, why? started reading through it, and I'm all, why did I ever make this? 12 of the 15 items on here include the word cheerleaders. I thought it was a little creepy, so I threw that one out and never looked back. Yeah. What is going on, everyone? Welcome back to the world, according to Briggs, and our list of 100 things to do or see in the US before Let's see you it. die. That's right, we're doing a list of 100. It's a long list, it's over 30 minutes, and it's gonna be a little faster paced than normal, or we'd be sitting here for like two hours. This list has 100 of the best things to see or visit in the United States. I've always been a little surprised that people don't realize what an amazing tourist destination the United States actually is. With this list, I hope to spark some interest in some of these places. We're coming okay. out of the pandemic, and this summer might be a great time to go see some things. As you watch the video, count how many places you've actually been to or visited, and then... This will be easy for me. Zero. Actually, my friends, let's play a game. So, I will make... I already have my notes right there. I will play... Um, I'll, let's play a game all together. I will pick 10 places from this list, uh, even though it will be crazy difficult, by the way, so I may have to cut a couple. And at the end, I will try to cut to three places. You can also do the 10, but at least try to, to tell me in the comments the three best places you saw on this list that you would love to visit or you already actually uh, visited. So this, this could, could be fun and I think it's a great way to, to all of us interact with, with each other. In the comment section, let us know what your final count was. Have you seen 10 of them? Have you seen four of them? Have you seen 50 of them? Or zero. Let us know and maybe even include what one was your favorite. Okay. This is a long video, so let's get going with 100 places let's in go. the United States you should see before you die. Sure. Oh man, I'm curious actually. <laughs> Number 100, Sequoia and Kings Canyon National Parks in California. Beautiful. The Sequoia National Park is America's second oldest national park and was established on September 25th, 1890. Kings mm. Canyon was established in 1940. The two parks are side by side east of Fresno. I saw this one already in another video. I think it's a beautiful place. I love trees, especially those big ones, but probably not making my, my top 10 list. <laughs> I have to be careful, you know. 99, the oh, Grand no. Canyon. It's a majestic 277 mile long canyon with the Colorado yeah. River flowing right through the center of it. This is so beautiful. That's Oh no, oh, okay, that, oh my god, this is making my list 100% going to my list. Grand Canyon. Look, I'm never going to Mars, right? So I have to go to Grand Canyon at least. And uh, I, I wonder how many people watching me already went to, to the Grand Canyon. It seems such an amazing, amazing place to, to visit. And so iconic with all those red slash orange colors. Oh man. Makes you feel small. Devil's Tower National Monument in Wyoming. This stands 1,267 okay. feet tall, and it's located in the northwest corner of the Black Hills. It's actually declared a monument by Teddy Roosevelt. Oh, I was not aware of this. Pearl Harbor's National Memorial in Hawaii. Everybody knows we were attacked by the Japanese during World War yeah. II, and it was one of the worst attacks this nation has ever seen. You could still see oil oozing from the engine rooms of the sunken ships. 96. The San Diego Zoo. It Hello, is home Zeus. to 3,700 animals. That's actually a question I already I, I have thinking about asking you guys for multiple times. I, lo I love zoos. I actually vi visit a couple of them in Europe. And uh, in America, there is beautiful zoos, 100%, right? Maybe this is actually the, the best one. And more than 650 species. I've been here like four times in my life. It's a great zoo. I would love to visit this one also. 
95, the International Spy Museum, Washington, D.C. It is exactly what it's called, a what? spy museum. Very interesting. No shit. 94, Williamsburg, Virginia. It's colonial capital of Virginia okay. and internationally known for its restoration activities and recreations of 18th century America. This seems beautiful also, but no, not making the list. 93, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame Museum in Cleveland. <laughs> okay. I will be there this summer. This place opened on September 2nd, 1995. Fun, but not 92, for me. 92, Biscayne National Park, Florida. Oof. This is one of the least crowded. I feel like Florida is so beautiful with all those beaches. But probably not making my list. But uh, this national park uh, seems like a beautiful one. I, I, I believe I saw it in, in other videos. Crowded sites managed by the National Park Service. It covers a total of 172,000 acres and 95% of the park is underwater. Oh, wow. It's fascinating, 91, actually. Yellowstone National Park, Wyoming. This is one of our best national parks. Been here two or three times in my life. So we added 91 and they already off the F2. Yellowstone. Do I know how to write Yellowstone? I think I know, but you know, who cares? Right, my friends? In Portuguese, I have an excuse. One I kind of just drove uh, through, this is two times tremendous. I actually visited. It's amazing. <laughs> Go there, see the geysers, see the buffalo. Oh, Your life will never be the same. I believe it. Oh, this is beautiful. Oh, man. What a beautiful place. Come on. 90. The Winchester Mystery House, San Jose, California. This is a weird place. It's worth reading about, but it's better to go see. I was not aware of this one. Actually, I wonder what's the story. 89. The Wright Brothers National Memorial, North Carolina. This is a monument dedicated to the Wright Brothers and their first flight. Everyone thinks it was at Kitty Hawk. It was actually down the road a bit at Kill Devil's Hill, not Kitty Hawk. This is the first federal park to have a permanent public structure. The monument was built in 1932. Okay. 88. Not the Plymouth Plantation, Massachusetts. This is where those first band of English people showed up. They would call themselves pilgrims and they showed up on oh. the Mayflower and they landed at Plymouth Rock. It's pretty neat. They have a little village set up like it supposedly was back when the pilgrims were here. I went there. Okay, this is very interesting place. Actually, I would love to visit this one. But I think I, I, should, I should not put this on the list, right? But I'm not sure. This seems like amazing amazing history. All the stories that people might, might tell you there. Oh man, America is such such a great place. The, I, I would love to visit this one 100%. There, I was young, but I remember going, this is a nice place to live. I wouldn't mind living here. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> 87, Niagara Falls, New York. More than 8 million visitors explore oh, Niagara it. Falls annually. A lot of people think this is just one big falls. And when you get there, you finally realize that it's actually three. Just a moment. Yeah, I got a false, right? Okay. That's what Water falls. Niagara Falls just kind of... I mean, do I have to explain this one? Look at that. That's crazy beautiful. Oh, come on. This is breathtaking. First, the whole area. There's Bridalville Falls, Horseshoe Falls, and American Falls. Oh, wow. 86, Thomas Edison's National Historical Park in New oh. Jersey. The area includes dozens of buildings that supported Edison's research into electricity, photography, motion pictures, chemistry, and other things. 85, Boston. I was not aware of that. I mean, so fascinating this video. Look, I know this is a long video. Probably will not even do that well on YouTube, even though you can help me leaving a like. Uh, but for me, those are the best videos. You know, I enjoy learning so much about this stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I think it's incredible. In common. This is the oldest park. So let's run it back because I did not pay attention. Tree and other things. 85, be... Boston Common. This is the oldest park in the okay. U.S., existing since 1634. In the colonial oh, wow. days, it was actually a cow pasture and a British encampment for a while. But it didn't start becoming a park till 1830s when an iron fence was put up around it. 84, Mauna Kea, Hawaii. Mauna Kea is the best astronomical observation facility on Earth. The observatory is used for scientific research and it's the largest facility of its kind. And this one seems beautiful. 
Mm. Right. It's one of six volcanoes that form the Hawaiian Islands, and it's the tallest mountain. I love on volcanoes. Earth. It's actually 3,600 feet taller than, than Mount Everest, but much of it's underwater. It's also about a million Ooh. years old, and the last time it erupted was probably around five to six thousand years ago. It's considered dormant now. 83, Hollywood, California. Hollywood, California is. Okay, this is a problematic one because I see this uh, stuff so many times in movies and YouTube videos, stuff like that. So. I feel like I would love to see it. So I know this is not beautiful, right? I mean, it's just, but the place itself, I feel like is a bit iconic. I will put Hollywood, but I will probably cut that. I know it's not Hollywood, the name, but you guys get the point, right? It's California. It's an illusion. It has reputation. It has an aura and it has mystique. <laughs> yeah. It's hard to find these days, but it's still there. You have the famous Hollywood sign, which kind of brings a lot of people in. You've got the Hollywood Walk of Fame, things like that. There's just a lot of nonsense that goes on around it. But if you actually study and learn where you want to go see things in Hollywood, famous mansions, things like that, it's very interesting. And it's really okay. a good time. Just stay out of the tourist stuff. Sure. 82, Nashville, Tennessee. This is one of the cities you need to visit at least one time in your life. There's this vibe you get in Nashville that is very unique. Elvis Presley recorded more than 200 songs at RCA's Studio B. There's still a string of Christmas lights on display that were hung when Elvis couldn't get into the spirit to record a Christmas album. Apparently they were trying to record it in like August and you know, no one's really got the Christmas feel in August. So I could see where the lights came in. Okay. 81, the Statue of Liberty and Elvis. When Andrew percent in it. That's my favorite monument in the world. And I never saw it. I love what that represents. I think freedom is the best. Freedom is the best thing we have in life. Stato, oh. Uh, yeah, Statue of Liberty, I, I have to see it one day. Island, New York Harbor. Not that I even care that much about New York, being honest with you guys, even though I also think it's iconic. But that monument is, I don't know, something special. The Statue of Liberty was gifted to the U.S. by France in 1886, and it's 83 of peace, meters way. tall. The same man that built the Eiffel Tower built the structure. His name was Gustav Eiffel, and it is one of the most photographed statues on the planet. It's beautiful. Number 80, the Brooklyn Bridge. Not too far away from the Statue of Liberty, you have the Brooklyn Bridge. This is iconic. It was officially... Oh, they are actually uh, not that far away. Okay, so this could be interesting to visit. He opened on May 24th, 1883. The Brooklyn Bridge was the world's first steel wire suspension bridge, and the first things to cross it were roosters. They sent them across to make sure it was okay. I don't think roosters were the best plan. Maybe some cows or horses or something like that that are a little heavier, but they sent roosters. 79, true state story. of New York, the Met, the Metropolitan Museum of Art, New York City. This opened on April 13th, 1870, and it's amazing. There's a lot of history in this building. The museum is the home to the world's oldest surviving piano, dating back to 1720. Even if it's not your type of thing, definitely go by and see this. Uh, not, I think this thing is, is tremendous, probably, but not going to make my list since uh, I have a lot of museums in, in Europe. Um, so, is. A couple of things here I don't, I, I'm not able to find in Europe, if you guys get the point. 78, the Golden Gate Bridge, San Francisco. If it's you've never seen bridge, this thing actually. in person, I would suggest it. It is amazing. It was completed Looks in like. 1937 and it's 1.7 miles long. Originally, it was supposed to be painted blue with yellow stripes to increase visibility for ships and things like that. But when the steel arrived, it was kind of this burnt red color from the primer and the architects decided that color was fine and they just kind of stuck with it. In 1937, okay. it cost 50 like cents it. each way to cross the bridge, roughly the equivalent of about 18 bucks today. It took over 30 years to remove the lead-based paint from the bridge. Yeah, so back when they realized lead paint was really bad, they had to strip the bridge and it took 30 freaking years. Oh, wow. Okay, that's fascinating. 77, Kennedy Space Center, Florida. This facility's primary function is the NASA's base of operation when it comes to rockets and launching things for pre and post launch. Most famously, it was the launching point for the Apollo moon missions and for the space shuttle most of the time. Its secondary function is for public education with its exhibits, displays, and history of space flight and travel. This one would also be fascinating to visit, not gonna lie, but um, I'm trying to be conservative. <laughs> 76, Everglades National Park, Florida. The Everglades National Park... Okay, I'm aware of this park already. It's also tremendous beautiful. 
Park is home to one of the largest wetlands in the world. It has plant and animal species not found anywhere else on the planet. Incredible. It was established on December 6, 1947, and it is home to an exotic population of animals. Alligators, manatees, hawksbill turtles, water moccasins, coral snakes, the list goes on. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in the wow. Everglades. 75. The Monterey Bay Aquarium, California. I love this place. One of my favorite aquariums. It opened on October 20th, 1984. It was great also. First time I was there was a year later, 1985. And it was amazing then. And it has done nothing but get better. They have a million gallon open sea exhibit that holds yellowfin tuna, large green sea turtles, barracuda sharks, and giant ocean sunfish. 74 Monument Valley, Arizona and Utah. You go see this one, you got two states to choose from. This place is known for its cluster of vast sandstone buttes. The large. This is beautiful. Arizona got me, man. This seems, seems like a, a Western type of scenario, you know, a uh, Western movie type of scenario. But uh, I don't know, I feel like. Oh, well, let's put it Arizona. I don't even know the name of that, but that place looks tremendous. Alligators, manatees, hawksbill turtles, water moccasins, coral snakes, the list goes on. There's a lot of weird stuff going on in the Everglades. That's it. 75. The Monterey yeah. Bay Eighth Night mind, it has Tuna, Large Green Monument Valley, Arizona, and Utah. You go see the Monument Valley, okay. Monument Valley. Is this this one, you got two states to choose from. This place is known for its cluster of vast sandstone buttes, the largest reaching 300 meters, about a thousand feet above the valley floor. This valley has been in so many movies, TV shows, and in print, it's just ridiculous. Any Western from the 1950s seems to have found their yeah. way to this. It was neat. So beautiful. 73, Carlsbad Cavern National Park, New Mexico. She's also it really a interesting. It area of 46,000 acres, and there are 117 known caves in the park. The big room, as they call it in Carlsbad, is an 8.2 acre cave. There are 17 species of bats you could see here. Whoa. 72, Canyon de Chelly National Monument, Arizona. For around 5,000 years, people have made their home in these sand... Yeah, and the thing is, all of those, they are looking a bit similar to me now, but uh, such beauties. I, I don't know, is this better than uh, the Grand Canyon or, or better than the, um, the Valley? I'm not sure. And Stone Canyons. They're often referred to as just one Canyon de Chez, but there's actually several canyons here. So Families beautiful. do still live here. That's why access is limited and, and visitors are required to have a guided tour in oh, most areas of this national monument. It's very interesting. 71, Mount Rushmore National Monument, South Dakota. Ah, this is also a crazy one. And this is so iconic. But I think this is more iconic for Americans than for me. Even though I would still still love to, to, to see this one. Dakota. Mount Rushmore isn't the only thing to see in South Dakota, but it is by far the most popular. Mount yeah. Rushmore was named after New York attorney Charles E. Rushmore, who had visited the area in 1885. While on the visit, he asked a guide what the name of the peak was. The guide's all, well, we don't have a name for it. It's just an unnamed peak. So they named it Rushmore after him. He later donated $5,000 to help get the Mount Rushmore project started. 90% of the carvings were actually done by dynamite. It wasn't like a guy out there with a hammer and chisel. Oh, wow. 70, Crater Lake National Park, Oregon. This one is amazing to see. It's one of those places if you just sit there and look at it for a while, you'll just, I don't know. It's just yeah, this, this one is crazy. Oh, this. man. If you know the back. I'm starting to have a feeling that making this out, this list was an awful idea because now I'm feeling pressured. But uh, it's all fun, my friends. Backstory to it so and how beautiful. it was created. It's even more amazing. First of all, it's the deepest lake in America. It's actually 1,943 feet deep. The lake's water comes directly from snow or rain, whichever happens, which we get a lot here in Oregon. And there's no inlets for the lake. There's no like little creeks going to it or anything like that. This is a mountain that had its top blown off in a volcanic eruption. The story begins with the volcanic eruption. It was so serious that scientists estimate it was 42 times more powerful than the Mount St. Helens eruption in 1980. Oh, wow. But so it turned this uh giant mountain into pretty much a cup and water and snow just accumulate in this cup and we have a lake it's pretty interesting that's a Number beautiful 69, one a mississippi river cruise 
The Mississippi River is long enough for you to take a cruise on. It's actually the third longest river in the world at 2,350 miles. The cruise industry has broken this off into three sections. Each section takes about a week to cruise, or you can knock them all out in one big three-week trip. And it's worth it. 68, right. Mackinac Island, Michigan. Mackinac Island is a summer resort island in Lake Huron. It's right between the Upper Peninsula and Lower Peninsula of Michigan. This is a great place to visit in the summer. Winters can be sketchy at best. It gets pretty cold there. 67, the Corn Palace, South Dakota. Yeah, that's a real thing, the Corn Palace. I don't get the attraction. I mean, it holds big dances, proms, graduations, this is amazing. things like that, meetings, whatever, stage shows. It's just kind of strange, but a lot of people really like this place. They go to it. I've made fun of it before on my channel, and people always correct me and say what a neat place it is. I got to visit, but a lot it. of people do. That's why it's on the list. 66, Gettysburg National Military Park, Pennsylvania. Gettysburg is the most famous battle of the Civil War. Thousands of Union and Confederate soldiers clashed on some really hot July days in 1863. The park includes over 6,000 acres of land, 1,300 monuments, 400 cannons, and 140 historic buildings. Everyone knows about Gettysburg, and if you're a history buff, you already know this is one of the must-see places on your history bucket list. Oh, this yeah, it seems tremendous. Martin Luther King's National Historical Park, Atlanta. This is the hometown of the late Martin Luther King. The 10 block area around Auburn Avenue is one of the city's most visited sites, showing where he was born, lived, worked, and the church where his father, grandfather, and him were all ministers. 64, Black Heritage Trail, Boston. Usually whenever you hear anything about Black Heritage Trails or anti-slavery movements, it something to do with the South, you know, the Underground Railroad, something like that. But Boston had an anti-slavery movement that was very important to this country. 63, Puaco Petroglyph Archaeological Preserve, Hawaii. This one's on the Big Island, and it's pretty impressive. They have over 3,000 ancient petroglyphs that are carved into the lava rock. The true meaning behind all these carvings is unknown, but Generally, it's believed that they were to announce the birth of someone important whenever they carved a new petroglyph in these lava rocks. They have 62, no idea. 62, Coney Island, New York City. Coney Island started off as a seaside resort in 1824. At some point, it started to turn into an amusement park, but not just one amusement park. There's people that own different parts of it, and it's just this big thing. It's amazing. Anyway, it's home to the famous Cyclone roller coaster, and it's been in too many... Not for me. I mean, but it seems really fun movies to count 61 the franklin institute philadelphia the franklin institute in philadelphia pays homage to the city's native son benjamin franklin one of the greatest americans of all time it was first opened in 1824 60 the alamo san antonio everybody knows but in case mm. you don't the alamo was the site of the battle that took place during texas bid for independence from mexico all defenders were killed but within six weeks san Ana, president of mexico was captured and he basically signed over texas to save his own life the original alamo was actually burned to the ground in april of 1836 but was rebuilt in 1854. I would actually like to go to San Antonio as a city, but not sure if that place makes a list, but the city seems tremendous. Number 59, Victoria Clipper Ship, Seattle. You can ride this high-speed catamaran from Seattle to Victoria, British Columbia in three hours. It's obviously because the pandemic been docked for a couple months now, but it's a pretty fun trip. Actually, any ferry you get in the Seattle, you know, Puget Sound area is a good trip. 58, the National Air and Space Museum, Washington, D.C. This is the world's largest aviation and space museum. It is also the most visited wow. museum in the country with more than 8 million visitors every single year. It was opened on July 1st, 1976. You could see the Enola Gay bomber who dropped the bomb on Hiroshima, also Charles Lindbergh's Spirit of St. Louis, and the Wright Brothers Flyer. 57, Daytona Beach, Florida. Daytona Beach runs for 23 miles on the Florida coast. It is known as... So I'm aware of this beach, actually. Um, this is a beautiful one, but um, I feel like California may have better beaches, right? As the world's center for racing, and it's also known as the world's most famous beach since the 1920s. But this they is beautiful. They used to actually race NASCAR on the beach. This is way... Oh, man. 
Wait, Nazgar on the... Oh, that's crazy. Okay, this is actually quite nice. Never mind. Maybe this is better than California. I'm not sure. Back in the day, but they still did it. Cars are still loud on the beach, but it's pretty slow. You got to go like walking speed almost. 56. Alaska Marine Highway. This is basically a ferry system that currently extends across like 34, 3500 miles of scenic coastline. Oh my god, the Alaska is so beautiful. It started 1948 through 1962. They kept adding things onto it. 55. Dinosaur Valley, Texas. This opened up in 1972. In 1909, George Adams, a young man, found strange three-toed tracks in the limestone bed of a river. Turns out these Whoa. were dinosaur tracks left in the mud. Well, the mud turned to rock and now you got these really cool footprints all over the place. It's actually... Oh, that's crazy, crazy cool. I would love to see this. I love dinosaurs. Quite impressive. 54. Lincoln Heritage Trail, Kentucky. Abraham Lincoln lived in Kentucky for the first seven years of his life, and this is kind of stuck with the state for some time now. On display is a replica of the tiny cabin where he was born, among other things. 53. The Kentucky Derby. Everybody knows what the Kentucky Derby is, and it's quite a party. The race is nice too, but most people go for the party. The fastest winner was Secretariat in 1973. 52, the Fort Worth Stockyards, Texas. Everybody knows where Fort Worth... <laughs> okay, this seems cool, but uh, yeah, this is not, not, not going to make my list. Even though this is probably where you have a lot of fun, uh, I would assume. Fort Worth is. It's just west of Dallas. It's part of the Dallas metro area. Fort Worth became a boomtown in the 1890s because it had the Southwest's biggest livestock market. Because of this, it also got the nickname Cowtown. Oh, that's interesting. 51. White Mountain National Forest, New Hampshire, and it's also in Maine. This is one of the most beautiful forests this country has to offer. Oh, that I looks mean, so Maine beautiful. New Hampshire, they just got beautiful landscapes. This area... Guys, I'm going to share what take. Why do you get... I, get ready. Yeah, I'm going to share what take. I'm getting a feeling lately that Maine may be top three best state in America in terms of natural beauty. Am I crazy about that? Probably. But I don't know, every time I see main uh, videos, oh, it's so beautiful. It was heavily logged back in the 1800s, and they've made a recovery since then. It was established in 1914 when they acquired 7,000 acres for $13. Today, it has an area of almost oh, nice. 800,000 acres in New Hampshire and western Maine. 50. Ashtig Island, Maryland. This island is best known okay. for its herd of wild horses, its pristine beaches, and it's got a really cool lighthouse. It's 37 mile long barrier island located on the eastern coast of the Delmarva Peninsula facing the Atlantic Ocean. The island was originally going to be made into a private resort in the 1960s, but it all came to a screeching halt when the locals were a little angry about this. The people kind of shot this idea down. Okay, just let me be clear, since we are more or less in the half of the video, at the middle of the video. Um, look, if I was, if I had to put all of the ones I like as, I probably would have like 40 at this point. But I'm trying to be very conservative, but most of the stuff I'm seeing is tremendous. 49. The Orchard House, Concord, Massachusetts. This is a very interesting place. This is the home of Louisa May Alcott. She wrote the 1868 classic novel, Little Women. She is the mm. first American woman to earn a living as a writer. They have open guided tours daily, except on a few different holidays. It's and crazy. it's free. 48. Alabama Civil Rights Sites. They have numerous historic sites throughout Alabama, paying tribute to the brave men and women who have fought for civil rights. It's a big part of American history, and it's something you should probably see. Okay, I mean. 47, Cahokia Mounds, Illinois. These are really interesting. I first saw these on a &E with some show called Ancient Mysteries with Leonard Nimoy. These are I was not aware of those, actually. What the hell are those? These are earthen mounds built by a civilization that they figured disappeared a couple hundred years before Columbus ever set foot on the United States. Some of these mounds are just a couple feet high, but some of them are as tall as 100 feet. The historic site sits across the Mississippi River from St. Louis, covering about 2,000 acres. 46, Notre Dame Stadium, Indiana. Yeah, this is where the Fighting Irish play, and it's an amazing place to see a college football game. I think... So is this a super popular stadium for college football? And Indiana team is, is a really good one, I would assume. So one of, this will not make my list, to be honest, but one of the things I want to do if I go to America, 
not if I go, when I go, because I think eventually I, I, I will go as long as God gives me health. But um, uh, is to visit, uh, um, to visit slash watch uh, um, a study of this and watch a, a American football uh, college game, because I think the, the environment is, is tremendous. Most people feel this is the most historic football stadium there is. Sure, if you're a college a fan from someplace one, else, you're going to think some other college is better. But I think most people would consider this to be the best place to see a football game. 45, Mall of America, Bloomington, Minnesota. This has been the largest mall, mall. in the country since forever. It's not going to be the largest much longer. In 2023, it looks like Miami's going to have one that's going to beat them a little bit. And since malls are disappearing, this one might be worth a visit. Okay. 44, Mark Twain's boyhood home and museum, Hannibal, Missouri. This was the home of Samuel Leghorn Clemens, better known as the author Mark Twain, but he lived here from 1844 to 1853. Oh, the musical of the seven. <laughs> Forty-three, the Hoover Dam, Arizona and Nevada. It's right there on the border. This one I've been to and the day we were going there, I was like, why are we going to see a dam? This sounds stupid. And I got there. I was impressed. It's not the largest thing I've ever seen, but it's just kind of strange being in this valley and how tall it is. And it's just it looks yeah. like this big, perfectly smooth slab of cement from the outside. Very interesting. And the history of the place. Oh, this looks kind of nice, actually. Is incredible. 42, Cedar Point Amusement Park, Sandusky, Ohio. Self-proclaimed roller coaster capital of the world, this is a must visit for roller coaster enthusiasts. If you're a roller coaster enthusiast and a hardcore one, you've been here already. But if you like roller coasters, this is a good one. When it was first opened, it was just a public bathing beach. And it's also a little haunted. They say there's a ghost that lingers around the carousel. 41, Apostle Islands National Lakeshore, Wisconsin. This is a group of 21 islands oh, and a 12 beautiful. mile stretch of coast on the mainland. It has more lighthouses than any other site oh. in the national park system with nine historic lighthouses on six different islands. Visitors can hike, paddle boat. It's got a lot of really cool stuff to do here. It's one of those places you go on a nice summer day. 40, Looks beautiful. the Art Institute of Chicago. The Art Institute of Chicago was founded in 1879 and it is still going. The museum contains more than 300,000 works of art. 39, Wrigley Field, Chicago. Yeah, staying in Chicago, you got Wrigley Field. This is where the Cubs play. It is known for its ivy covered brick outfield wall. Giant. So I have a question for you guys um, that are watching until 30 minutes or something. Uh, do you do you think baseball is still very alive in America or is a dying sport at this point? Uh, because um, so I, I saw some people disagreeing about this on my comments the, the other day, um, but I don't know. I mean, I know it's, it's a historical type of sport, but it's still pretty much relevant. Or do you guys think, yeah, Andre, in maybe 20 years, maybe this will not even be a sport anymore, or at least in the level that it is right now? And chewing gum businessman William Wrigley Jr. bought the Cubs in 1921. It was named Cubs Park from 1920 to 1926 before renaming it to Wrigley Field in 1927. If you want to see a baseball game, this is one of the best places to do it. It's beautiful also. 38. American Museum of Natural History, New York City. This is one of the best Ooh. museums this country has to offer. Probably is the best. It opened in 1869. It used to be located in Central Park when the first exhibits opened in 1871. This is an interesting fact about it. In 1964, more than 400,000 worth of jewels were stolen from the museum. What? 37. Independence National Historical Park, Philadelphia. This is where the Constitution was debated and written out, and it was also signed here. The park represents the founding ideals of this nation. It's also got the Liberty Bell, so that's something neat to see. Sure. 36, Alcatraz Island, San Francisco, oh, California. This is iconic. Everybody knows about Alcatraz, and they've had some movies about escapes they had here. It first opened its doors on August 11th, 1934. This was also when the first prisoners showed up. I would love to visit that. Uh, um, I mean, but no, I don't know. I'm not going to put on the list, but it's super iconic, and uh, it's something that a lot of people are aware of. All the youth made stuff with that, so uh, yeah, it's a very popular place. 35, National Museum of the American Indian, Washington, D.C. This is a newer <laughs> museum. It was only 
opened in, in 1989, it houses permanent and temporary exhibits that showcase the diverse heritage and history of the North and South American Indians. This museum is the largest of its kind in the world. Oh, I love it. 34, Newport, Rhode Island. In 1657, Newport, Rhode Island operated the first ferry service in the nation. This is an old colonial place and it has more colonial homes in use than any other location in the U.S. And yes, it is in Rhode Island. Most people seem to think that the only city or town or anything they have in Rhode Island is Providence. There's more to this state than just Providence. Seems interesting also. 33, Denali National Park, Alaska. I'm not really doing this list in any kind of order, but I think if I was, this would be at least in the top five. Denali. Yeah, that's my feel. I have to put some, some stuff from Alaska because I cannot make a top 10 list of beautiful things in America and not have Alaska. Yeah, this one will do it. Um, and look at that. Come on. Denali, right? Let's continue, actually. Order, but I think if I was, this would be at least in the top five. Denali is amazing. It became a national park on February 26, 1917, and it's basically centered around Mount McKinley. Actually, its native Alaskan name is Denali, which Denali National Park, you get it. 32, Yosemite National Park, California. <laughs> Just an all-around beautiful place, like Half Dome is there. You have Yosemite Village, which is kind of neat. Yosemite. Yosemite, Yosemite, I'm not sure. Um... Oh, that did this. See, of course, this makes the list. Come on, this is so beautiful. See, then you have Yosemite Falls, which is. I'm gonna say one thing. I think Yellowstone may be the number one, but I think Yosemite is very close to in terms of natural beauty when when it comes to a park in America. Do you guys agree with me? Really, an impressive waterfall. It's the highest waterfall in North America and the fifth highest in the world. Huh. Thirty-one Acadia National Park, Maine. So this is a national park that nobody ever really talks about. I've been here. It's kind of cool. I mean, it's not up there with Yellowstone or Yosemite, but it is definitely a nice place to visit. Acadia is the fifth smallest national park in the United States. 30, the Rocky Mountain National Park, Colorado. If you've Ooh. never seen the Rocky Mountains, this is a good place to start seeing them. The Rocky Mountains have an average altitude of 8,000 feet. The mountain range stretches over 3,000 miles and covers six different states. Oh, I feel like this is a crazy place. I already... Oh, yeah, Rocky... Okay. okay, Colorado. Colorado low-key kind of beautiful. Yeah, this is to be... This is unreal. Yeah, this is gonna make the list. Rocky Mountains. 29. The Wave, Arizona. The Wave is a sandstone rock formation located in Arizona near its northern border with Utah. The Wave is so well known amongst hikers and photographers okay, that this they is actually crazy. have to... This looks unreal. Oh, man. ...limit the amount of people that go there. They have a daily lottery system used to dispense only 10 next day permits in person and 10 online permits. So basically 20 people a day get to go check this out with a guide. 28. The Iowa State Fair The very first Iowa State Fair was held in Fairfield, Iowa between October 15th and 17th in 1854. It's the single largest event in the state of Iowa. They get a million people a year from all over the world to come see this fair. Iowa of all places. 27. New Orleans If you watch this channel long enough, you know that I always say go visit New Orleans, stay in the French Quarter, be careful, and don't go too far out. It's a pretty dangerous city. The French Quarter is definitely something you want to see. New Orleans in general, it's a nice place to see. Is it a dangerous city in New Orleans? Oh man, that's disappointing um, because it seems so beautiful. Just be aware of where you're going. New Orleans was founded in 1718 and the first community was nothing more than a trading camp on the curving east bank of the Mississippi River. 26. Salem, Massachusetts. Salem is famous for burning locals when they thought they were witches back in 1692. This was a big what? thing. As a kid, I was scared about it. I watched too many movies about this. But the burning didn't stop there. The actual entire city was burnt in 1914. That's crazy. 25. Glacier National Park, Montana. Uh, this park was... Geez, this park is so beautiful. I, I saw it in other video. Oh, man, this... Yeah, I'm gonna make um, 
Yeah, no. Should I? Of course. Established in 1910, Glacier National Park covers over 1 million acres. Currently, it's home to 26 glaciers, but the numbers are shrinking down from 150 in 1850. They've only had 10 bear attacks in the history of the park. Oddly enough, two occurred on the same night, miles apart. Both victims were 19-year-old females. That was 54 years ago this August. (laughs) What? That's crazy. 24. Las Vegas, Nevada. Oh, yeah. Of course you have to visit Las Vegas, Nevada at least once in your life. It's known for its gambling and its shows and all that, but these days it has so much more to do than just gamble and drink. There's a lot of great shows, a lot of activities to do there. It's a fun town. 23. The Columbia River Gorge, Oregon. The Columbia River Gorge was created about... Okay, so the same thing I said for mine, I may have to set for... uh, um... Oregon. Oregon, every time I see stuff from there, seems so beautiful. 40 or 60 million years ago. The Columbia River is the largest river in the Pacific Northwest and the seventh largest in North America. The river flows from British Columbia through the state of Washington, forming much of the border between Washington and Oregon before it finally gets to the Pacific Ocean near Astoria, Oregon. Seems a tremendous place. Oh my God, maybe I should put this on the list. (laughs) I'm gonna skip it, but 22, probably wrong. Atlantic City, New Jersey. There's not a lot of things to see in New Jersey. Not a lot of reasons to go to New Jersey, but Atlantic City's worth seeing. They've got a great boardwalk and the world's largest musical instrument. It's a massive pipe organ with over 33,000 pipes okay. inside it. 21. Seattle's Gum Wall. People have been sticking gum on this wall since the early 1990s. It's about 50 feet long and it's just covered with gum. They tried to clean. Yeah, this one not gonna make my list by any means. In 2015, Love America, Game Wall, I'm out. Awful idea, no chance. They ended up removing 2,350 pounds of gum, and it took them over 100 hours to clean it. They just started right back up after it was finished. It's located right outside the main entrance of Pike Place Market. I was just there like two weeks ago. It kind of smells. Number 20, the Fremont yeah. Troll, Seattle, Washington. Yep, we're staying in Seattle. The troll was created in 1989, and it's this like sculpture underneath a bridge. Looks like a troll. They kind of had this art competition to revitalize the underneath of the bridge because it was just a dumping ground for everyone's trash and people okay. sold drugs there. So they did this. Uh-huh. It's kind of nice now. Tourists go there. Ever since the bridge was built in 1932, and the sculpture was inspired by the folklore of Billy Goat's Gruff. It's kind of weird when you see it, though. 19. The Great Smoky Mountains, Tennessee. The Great Smoky Mountains are estimated to be around 300 million years old. That would make them one of the oldest mountain ranges on Earth. The mountains are officially entitled the Salamander Capital of the World. They have a lot of salamanders there, in case the Salamander Capital of the World didn't tip you off. Oh, this is so beautiful also. But I am going to skip it, but it's so beautiful. The Great Smoky Mountains are beautiful. I would suggest... A couple of you guys that went to, to those places, you guys are thinking, yeah, Andre is messing up this list. This one really needs to be on the list. Just anyone in the Tennessee area, just go see them. There's oh, about wow. a thousand miles of trails in the park for hiking and mountain biking. Number 18, Orca Island, Washington. This is located in the northwest corner of Washington State in the Puget Sound. The island's got a population of just a little over 5,000 people. This looks insanely beautiful also and it's only 57 square miles. There are orca here all the time. You can see them, but if you really want to see orca out in the waters off Orca Island, go between May and October during the salmon run. You can see all the orca you want, and this is worth it. Oh, wow, that's crazy. Disney World, Orlando, Florida. Who hasn't wanted to or been to Disney? I would love to visit Disney also, but uh, no, no, no. Disney World or Disneyland. I grew up near Disneyland in Southern California, and Walt well, Disney World in Orlando is so much bigger. It was opened on October 1st, 1971, with just one park, the Magic Kingdom. Now they've got all kinds of animal parks and everything else like that. This is like one of those once in a lifetime trips you got to take your kids on when they're okay. you know under the age of 17 and they can actually enjoy it. Number six. So it's actually better to go to if I go to Disney, I should go to Florida instead of California. Is that correct? Teen, the Puget Sound, Washington. Now we're looking at the whole Puget Sound, not just Orca Island or Seattle. This area is mostly cold and wet, which means it's also green and beautiful. It's one of my favorite places to go. Up near Seattle, just anywhere around Seattle. I love it up there. Number 15. 
Highway 101, Oregon, California, and Washington. This is the greatest road trip in the country, I think. In the early 20th century, okay. it was almost impossible to travel along the Oregon coast unless you had a boat because many of the small towns weren't connected and they had no bridges. And you had to go inland and then come back and it was just a nightmare. The highway was created after World War I when Oregon voters approved the construction of... Okay, this seems like... A, oh man, with the, all the water. Okay, this seems kind of nice to, to, to travel with, with a car and your family. Oh, I would love this one. Bridges and roads all up the coast. California did the same thing. Number 14, Arches National Park, Utah. More than Yeah, this is also a beautiful one, but um, I feel like I already have similar to those on my list. 2,000 natural stone arches can be found in this park. From a distance, oh, nice. they sort of look fake, like someone came in to make a sci-fi movie like Star Trek and just kind of <laughs> yeah. left them there. The natural formations are a result of temperature changes, sweltering heat to freezing to thawing to rain, snow. They've shaped these for thousands of years. The tallest Incredible. arch is the South Arch of Double Arch, which is 144 feet. Number 13, Taos Pueblo, New Mexico. These adobes were built with mud and straw like all adobes are, and they have sheltered Native Americans for nearly a thousand years. The Taos Pueblo today appears pretty much like it did when the Spanish explorers arrived in 1540. It is one of the oldest continuously inhabited communities in North America. Well, that, I would like to, to visit that also. That's, oh man, man, come on. I mean, I'm reacting to America stuff, so. Why am I impressed? You know, <laughs> I, I should already be aware of this. Number 12, Pike Place Market, Seattle, Washington. This is a very interesting place. In 1907, when it opened, the city council members idea was to cut out the middleman. So you didn't have any, I don't know, like major chains coming in to basically take the fish from the fishermen and then sell them to the public and take their cut. They wanted the fishermen to sell directly to the people or other farmers or farmers, whatever. They just want to cut out. Okay. Well, this is also interesting. I mean, America is so, so diverse. I, I love it. The middleman. The iconic neon sign was installed in 1937 and the first Starbucks ever was opened here in 1971. Number 11, Millennium Park, Chicago, Illinois. Millennium Park is pretty much in the center of everything in Chicago. It's not like the center of it, but near the loop where everything's going on. It opened on July 16th, 2004. It's a 24 acre park that replaced, which was a just a desolate area of railroad tracks, parking lots, and homeless oh. people and everything else like that. It went 340. I saw this one uh, in, you know, maybe some YouTube videos or something. I, I, I recognize this, uh, but I, I was not aware this was in Chicago. Million dollars over the original budget. And it's where they got that big silver bean, the chrome, whatever shiny bean. Check it's that cool. out if you're ever in Chicago. Number 10, Grand Central Terminal, New York, New York. Grand Central is one of the world's largest, busiest, and my favorite train terminal. This place is chandeliers, marble floors, marble walls. It opened back on February 2nd, 1913. Looks really nice, back actually. When they made beautiful buildings worth keeping for oh, 100 wow. years. They don't make them like that anymore. As you walk in, there's a massive golden clock that's estimated to be worth about $20 million. You can take private tours where they'll tell you all the secrets <laughs> and show you like hidden staircases and underground rooms, all kinds of cool stuff like that. Number nine, Portland Headlight, Portland, Maine. This is probably the most iconic. Ah, oh, this looks so beautiful. This looks so beautiful. The water, all the green, the cozy houses. This is a tremendous one. Andrea, you post so much on the videos. I know, my friend. <laughs> there is always someone putting that comment in all videos. It's crazy. Um, actually, let, let, let's one thing. So I tend to say that uh, most of you guys do not watch the entire video. And that's true because I can check my YouTube stats. Uh, most people just watch the first five minutes, 10 minutes. It depends how, how long the video goes. So right now I'm talking for people that really like my, my content. Uh, and I want to know which uh, are, are those uh, people, you know. So you put your top three, if you went, of course, of the places you end up seeing today. Like, like I said at the beginning. And also leave a number. 99, you know, because that way I would love to see how many 99s I would get. That means that you end up watching uh, what I'm watching right now. And this is pretty much uh, not at the end of the video, but almost lighthouse we have here in the United States. It's photographed all the time. And if you ever pick up a postcard from New England, it's chances are it's going to have this lighthouse on it. George Washington actually commissioned this lighthouse in 1790, designed to tower over the lightkeeper's quarters in Fort Williams Park. 
Number it's eight, beauty. Diamond Head State Monument. Most people don't realize this if they haven't been to Hawaii, but they see Diamond Head and they just think it's like a peninsula. It's actually a crater. If you see it from the... Oh man, I was not aware of this. That's crazy. Sky almost looks like Crater Lake without the water. There are great views from the top of Diamond Head. The military realized this back in the day and they put a bunch of lookout towers up there. Bunkers from those military days are still okay. at the top of Diamond Head. You can hike up there. It's only 560 feet above sea level, but I will tell you this, it is always crowded. There always seems to be a whole bunch of people up there. So trying to snap a perfect selfie at the top of Diamond Head might get tricky. I believe it. Number seven, Philadelphia City Hall, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. This city hall doesn't look like it belongs in the U.S. It looks like very much a like 1600s European building to me. It's just gorgeous. <laughs> it's the beat, largest yeah. city hall in the country and the tallest masonry bearing building in the world. It's currently the 16th tallest building in Pennsylvania. It's really a beautiful. A lot of history went on in this building and it's definitely worth a visit. I like it. Number six, South Beach, Florida. When you think of Miami, you think of South Beach. That's the okay. beach that's in all the movies, in all the ads. It's going to be South Beach. It's beautiful. The Art Deco. It's amazing. The people here are beautiful. So if you're a little bit older like myself, you might feel out of place hanging out at the beach here. But if you're younger, this is a great place to be seen. And it's a beautiful beach, too. Oh, it seems fantastic. Number five, Times Square, New York City. Times Square is probably one of the... Oh uh, man, I have to put this one because I, I, I see this too many times growing up. I have to put it just for nostalgia reason. New York. Uh, this is square times, right? Square. Okay, yeah, this one I, I have to put it. First things that come to mind when you think you, about You might tell me, Andrea, that's capitalism all over. Why you care about that? Uh, sorry, even the camera was lo uh, losing focus. I don't know. I mean, like I said, I I, I grew up watching this so. city. More than 50 million people visit this area every single year. It used to be kind of gross back in the 1980s. It was filmed with like adult theaters and stuff like that. But it went through a revitalization in the late 80s, early 90s. <laughs> and it's a really nice place to just at least see once. It's touristy, obviously. It's a neat place to see. Yeah, I would love to see it one time. That's it. Number four, Blue Ridge Parkway. It's in Virginia, North Carolina. A lot of people say this is the best road trip in the United States. Well, I still beautiful. think the 101 along the California, Oregon, Washington coast is the best one. But a lot of people say this is the best. It's not just the drive either. It's beautiful scenery, hiking trails all over the place. The entire parkway is 469 miles long and the speed limit is 45 miles an hour. It'll take you 12 hours of driving with no bathroom breaks, no traffic, no road delays, no stopping to take pictures, 12 hours to complete the whole thing. Okay. It's Number crazy. three, Death Valley National Park, California. California has some serious extremes. Death Valley is one of the hottest places on the earth, and it actually holds the record for the hottest temperature ever measured. It is 3.4 million acres. Death Valley is also the second largest national park in the United States. Oh, this is crazy beautiful. Yeah, Death Valley is going on the list. I'm sorry, my friend. Uh, yeah, at this point I have like 15, but I will cut a couple. That... Okay. And it's got over a thousand miles of roads to explore. A lot of them are dirt roads, but you can explore them. I'm not a desert guy, Look but I've that. been to Death Valley more times than I can remember. And it's got a certain beauty to it. Uh, just make sure you got a good cell phone on. You get stuck down one of these dirt roads and you don't have the right supplies, you will die. Number two, okay. Route 66. This is the mother of all road trips. It's this is also super iconic, the, the Road 66, um, but probably not making the list, but it's super iconic. I, I would love also to, to travel one day on this route. Starts in Chicago, Illinois and stretches all the way to Santa Monica, California at the Santa Monica Pier, actually. This route is what brought so many people to California back in the 40s, 50s and 60s. This is how all the wannabe stars got to Hollywood back in the day. There's a lot of historic and weird things it. along this route. I don't know if anyone really does the entire thing anymore. It just seems like one of those things you'll do parts of it. That's about it. I tried one time. I didn't make it far. We had a whole plan of three, four days of doing it. We made it to the second day. Turn around. Came back to California. And number one, Alaska. Yeah, the entire state is something you should see. Not just <laughs> okay, so I guess I will replace the other place for this. Yeah, Alaska. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah, because this this explanation makes a lot of sense to me. I feel Alaska by itself is so beautiful. Yeah, oh, Alaska. There's so much to see in Alaska, you won't know where to start. My suggestion, start at the Kenai Peninsula. Hook yourself up with one of the many guided tours of the state. You will see bears, <laughs> so nice. moose, whales, lakes, glaciers, waterways, and just... It's this amazing. Is incredible, state. Most friends. of this state is untouched. It's just there as it probably was a thousand years ago. Alaska has oh. around 100,000 glaciers and more coastline than the rest of the United States combined. It's also the only state to have coastline in three different oceans. This is the so Arctic crazy. Ocean, the Pacific Ocean and the Bering Sea. All right, that's uh, Let's run it back a bit because I have to see. I know the <laughs> video already, but I have to see it again. Alaska impresses me so much. Oh, man. Alaska. Yeah, the entire state is something you should see, not just Denali. There is so much to see in Alaska, you won't know where to start. My suggestion, start at the Kenai Peninsula. Hook yourself up with one of the many guided tours of the state. You will see bears, moose, whales, lakes, glaciers, wow. waterways, and just... It's an amazing. Come on, that looks unreal. What is that? I mean, Alaska is so beautiful. America overall is crazy beautiful, don't get me wrong, but Alaska... Man, I I would love to visit one day. Amazing state. Most of this state is untouched. It's just there as it probably was a <sighs> thousand years ago. Alaska has around 100,000 glaciers and more coastline than the rest of the United States combined. It's also the only state to have coastline Stunning. in three different oceans. The Arctic Ocean, the Pacific Ocean, and the Bering Sea. Oh, this is All crazy. All right, that's our list. I hope you guys enjoyed it. It was an extremely long list. I wanted to do this to see how it would work out. Let me know in the comment section below how many of these places you visited. Zero. What was your final total <laughs> and what was your favorite? All right. Okay, so <laughs> look at the such beautiful flag flow, flying. And uh, this was a tremendous video by America. So I, I, I love this, pic this picture, uh, this video slash picture at the end. So my friends, let's finish this with my top 10. Uh, okay, let's try it. I mean, Grand Canyon, 100%. Canyon. After that, uh, Yellowstone, 100%. Yellow. Okay, Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, number three. I'm going to put uh, um, Statue of Liberty in, in New York. I think I have to see that. I like that too much. No, I have a lot of a lot of stuff, my friends. Stay with me, please. Uh, Yosimit for oh Yos Yosimit. That's how you said it. Yosimit. So Grand Canyon, Yellowstone, Start of Liberty, Yosimit five, Glacier Mountain, Montana. Too beautiful to, to ignore. Um, six, Alaska, 100%. Let's go just Alaska like the guy did. So if he did, I also can do it. Um, okay, now I have to make some choices. I feel like, uh, whoo, this, this is, <laughs> I'm going to put Nicaraguas. I, I think it's also so beautiful. Nicaraguas. Am I saying, or Ni Niagaras? Nicaraguas is, is, is other thing. Never mind, my friends. What I know. Um, so I have seven, I have to pick other three. I'm probably going with... Um, I don't know. <laughs> I'm probably going with um, Las Vegas. Trying to, because I already have so, ma so many national parks. Las Vegas, number eight. And I, I'm going to go with Times Square, to, to be honest. I, I have to see that. I'm square and uh, I'm going to finish this uh, with Rocky Mountains because I also thought they are beautiful. Okay, now to to share with you the only three and that's what I want you guys to do also. You, you don't have to do your top 10. So I'm going to try to be a bit flexible on this top three. Probably not the best I would love to see, but that if I had to pick three that are balances, that would give me some joy, okay? So I would go Yellowstone for sure. It's, it's a bit difficult between Yellowstone and, uh, and uh, Yosemite, but I will just pick one. Yellowstone. Number two, 
I would go Alaska. Yeah, I have to go Alaska. I mean, even though I know probably there is nothing to do, but uh, in terms of natural beauty, so beauty is so crazy. And I would go, you know, I would finish with the Statue of Liberty. I know this is probably will, you guys will not agree with my top, but for me as a European, this this is kind of important. So Yellowstone, Alaska, and Statue of Liberty. Those will be the three places if I had to go, but honestly, I would go to all of the ones you saw there. <laughs> so guys, do not forget to leave a like. Do not forget to subscribe. Uh, this was a, a long video, as as you can can see. So for me, super important. If you really can, can leave a like on this one, leave a comment, um, all the good stuff. Because look, um, I can do a video that is 10 minutes. And for me, a lot of times what this video does versus the, the one that is 10 minutes is the same in terms of, um, you know, getting views or, or even subscribers it is basically the, the same. But uh, these ones, I think like you guys can also... Um, know my personality a bit more, uh, also share with me what you think about America, what places you really like. So doing a one hour video is not smart, basically, is what I'm trying to say. But to, honestly, who cares about that if you had a great time and I also had a great time. So do not forget to leave a like, do not forget to subscribe. See you guys next time. Bye, my friends. Do not forget to leave me your top three.